Hey, let's talk about Caitlin Clark again. We talked yesterday about how she's making her team better. While I believe the Chicago Sky are at fault for making their team worse by focusing solely on their star rookie, Angel Reese. Well, the question then becomes why? Why is one doing her team a service by it being all about team? And why is the other doing her team a disservice by making it all about we? All right, here's the deal. If you remember back when, a couple years ago, when Angel Reese beat Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese was terrific. LSU, terrific. Guess what, though? Caitlin Clark became the star. Why? Well, it has everything to do with style of play. When you watch Caitlin Clark play, you're seeing somebody different. You're seeing somebody like Steph Curry. I said two years ago, after watching her even get beat by LSU, we're seeing the modern woman, Steph Curry. Why? What does that mean? Well, people think that means just shooting from the three-point line. No, it doesn't. I remember Coach Knight. Coach Bobby Knight, my college coach, during a game on ESPN of Steph Curry's talking about his passing. He said, you know, people think that Steph Curry is all about deep threes and making long shots. No, no, no. It's passing. And then it's getting to the rim. Now, Caitlin Clark does the same thing. A lot of people compare her to Pete Maravich. Now, Pete Maravich is a little too old for most of you. Pete Maravich is one of my all-time idols with the flair and that type of stuff. And sure, that's that. But let's keep it modern. The Steph Curry that we know in the NBA wasn't really seen in the NBA, even with the greats like Isaiah, Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, you name a point guard. They didn't play it the way Steph Curry does. Sure, they assisted. Sure, they could shoot the ball. There isn't anything in the world of basketball that Isaiah Thomas, I believe the best small point guard in the history of the league, could possibly do. He could do everything, but the game was different for a lot of reasons. So we see Steph, and he does all his stuff. Same thing in women's basketball. We've never seen anything like Caitlin Clark. We've never seen the deep threes. We've never seen the behind the back. We've never seen the no look. Yes, we've seen it occasionally out of players, but not all the time. Not that that's what her game is. Think about it. We've seen good passes. Diana Taurasi, terrific player, long time. Maya Moore, I could go down the list of great players, but we've never seen it done in an era where this stuff led by Steph Curry is so important and and so highlighted. You know, Isaiah Thomas came on my show and he made an interesting point. He said, you know, back in the day, Sports Center and other sports shows would show dunk after dunk. Look at this guy dunking on that guy. And while they still do, most of what you see now is deep threes. Most of what you see now is someone going to the rim and flicking it up high. And that's what we like now. Sure, we still like the dunk. Of course we do. We talk about it. But the truth is, the highlights, what we see are Steph Curry. Dom, shooting it from three, or Dame, whatever the hell his name is, shooting it from deep. Guys going to the rim, behind the back passes, and that's what Caitlin Clark gives us. On the other hand, Angel Reese doesn't. And it's not her fault. She's dominant in her own way. I mean, let's be honest. The girl won a national championship in college and is putting up double-double numbers rookie year in the WNBA. And let's not forget, both of these are rookies. But we've seen Angel Reese before. We've seen the big post player before. We've seen the person that plays basically on a block. In the WNBA, we've seen people that play from the free throw line down or on the block towards the basket. So that's the difference in style. And, and I get it. Look, people are going to like one player, not like one player. Some like Magic. Some like Bird. Some like Isaiah. Some like Jordan. Some like Reggie. Some like Jordan. Some like you. You, know, you get it. But the truth of the matter is, we've seen something different here in Caitlin Clark. Now, let's go to the other things. How things have been handled. Okay, so Angel Reese beats Caitlin Clark. Let's go back in time. And Angel Reese, before she's even off the court, is taunting Caitlin Clark. Now, I want to ask you something. You ever seen that before in a national championship game? I was just thinking about national championship games. You ever seen that before? Even as loudmouth and ridiculous as the Fab Five were back in the day, when North Carolina beat them and Weber turned the basketball over, Dean Smith crew acted great. I've never seen that. I've never seen that kind of action, that kind of arrogance, that kind of stupidity, that kind of talk immediately on the court. Now, here's what you got. It elevated Angel Reese to a certain status. No question it did. People knew her. Some loved her. I guarantee you, in her own crowd... Oh, how great was that? You showed that little girl, uh, Caitlin Clark, how it really was, blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. Next year, 
Same two teams play. Clark wins. Fight. She doesn't taunt. She stays above the fray. Now, there is no drama. Let me go to the next thing. There is no drama with Caitlin Clark. None. Zero. Let me go back. After Angel Reese did all that taunting and Angel Reese designed herself or designated herself as Barbie or whatever she did and took her clothes off for Instagram and posed and all this stuff, what happened? Exactly what I told you was going to happen. She was going to have a press conference where she cried and she claimed to be sexualized. What is that? To the, to the average person, you know what that is? Drama. Total drama. And you know what the average person doesn't give a rat's ass about? WNBA drama. Who gives a shit about WNBA drama? We barely gave a damn about the WNBA before Caitlin Clark, much less WNBA drama. What has Caitlin Clark done? Nothing. Olympic snub. You know what she did? Angel Reese, to her credit, did the same thing. Came out and balled out against the All-Stars. What has Caitlin Clark done ever since the league started this year? And she's getting knocked around. Kennedy Carter, heck, she got knocked around the other day. You know what she's done? Laughed, continued to play, not reacted. She stayed above it. And ultimately, you combine that with great performance. You combine that with a story of her team getting better and better and better. And it's a perfect snub. Let's go to the Olympic snub for a second. The Olympic snub was interesting. Because when and how she was playing leading up to the Olympics, most people that I knew in the league said she was best point guard in the league. But you know how this went. The angry old G's, they didn't want her on there. They didn't want all the attention on Caitlin Clark. They didn't. Because they knew if she went there, it would be about her. If the coach didn't play her all the minutes, people would be complaining. Heck, now in Indiana... People are mad at Christy Sides, who should be the coach of the year in the WNBA. They're mad at her anytime Caitlin Clark doesn't go for like 30, 20, and 10 or whatever. They're ridiculous here in Indiana about the coach. But the truth of the matter is, the coach Sides is doing a great job. So here's the Olympic snub. It's short-sighted. It would have been the most watched Olympic Games ever. Instead, it was the least watched game since 2008 in terms of women's basketball. So they were short-sighted by all this. They were short-sighted, they didn't understand, and they lost an opportunity. They didn't lose the sport, they just lost an opportunity. An opportunity to grow the sport nationwide on the world's biggest stage. It was a mistake, and now they're admitting it. Okay, how'd Caitlin Clark handle it? No drama. There has been no drama with Caitlin Clark. What Caitlin Clark does is kind of simple, really. She shows up at games, she signs autographs, she talks to little girls wearing jerseys, she smiles to the crowd, and then here's the most important thing. She competes like a maniac. I mean like a maniac. And we all see her getting better, and that's endearing to the sports fan. Look, Angel Reese is endearing as well. But every time you see something relative to Angel Reese, what's it about? As I said the other day, it's about her. It's not about her team. It's about her. Rip and don't like my old coach, Bobby Knight, however much you want, but it was always we and us. And I got taught that my entire sporting life. I'm not only Coach Knight, my high school coach, my grade school coach. Let's go back. So the public now says, all right, we see both of you. We watch both of you. But now there's a big difference because one team is winning and one team is getting its brains beat out. One team is about us. The Indiana Fever, because their star player has made it about us, not me, not me, us. The other one in Chicago, and I'm going to get to this. It's not, it's not Angel Reese's fault. It's not. Angel Reese is smart. Angel Reese is good. Can she make buckets? No. But for what she's doing, she is good, really good. But her operation, her team, her coach, know how to handle it. They're making it about her not the team, and we go away. I don't care how talented you are. I don't care how good you are. Your team loses. We're moving on to the next, particularly with the NFL season starting and college football starting. Are you kidding me? So here in Indiana, we're going to celebrate Caitlin Clark all through the playoffs, see how far it goes, see how great it is or isn't. In Chicago, probably going to be a passing thing. Probably going to be a one-hit wonder. And the reason is simple. One makes it about her, the other makes it about 
us. It's literally that simple. See you tomorrow.